Okay, so I'm also going to share a presentation with you. All right, you should be able to see that. Um, so again, welcome. Thanks so much for coming um, to this presentation around Black Affinity Housing. I'm going to talk about this new program um, that will start this coming fall. Um, when we started talking about developing this program, we knew that we would need the support and engagement of our campus partners, our campus community with faculty, staff, and students. Um, so thank you so much for, for being here today. We're really curious your thoughts, ideas. Um, this is a brand new program. Um, so really curious about your feedback um, and what you have to share with us and how we can partner together as we start this program next year. So we're gonna start with some introductions. Um, Richard, I'll let you start us off. Sure, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Richard Henderson, Assistant Director of Residence Life. I oversee the South Campus currently, which is BT, uh, Burnwood, Fairhaven, currently uh, home to Pride Housing. And I've been working with kind of a smaller task force group since last summer, uh, trying to develop the piece of Black Affinity housing in terms of what it looks like inside and also working with the Black Affinity Advisory Group that we've had going for a few months now. So thanks for all you all being here. Happy to answer questions later than morning. Thanks, Richard. Um, my name is Vicki Vandwerf. I use she, her pronouns and work as the Associate Director of Residence Life. I really work with any student facing initiatives. Um, in my previous experience, my um, past institution, I came from a, a place that had really strong living learning programs, residential colleges, um, theme communities. So this is um, near and dear to my heart um, in my experience. And I've really seen these programs um, provide a lot of support. I'm an engagement for students, so really excited to talk with you all about this today. And Dong, I'll have you go next. Hi everybody, my name is Dong Vo. I am a supervising resident director, um, and I currently oversee the Ridgeway Beta Gamma and Kappa complexes on campus. And we also have um, Liam here who works with all of our communications and marketing. Um, he's not presenting today, but you'll hear from him at the end um, answering some questions and um, looking at your questions through the chat. So we wanted to start out today and really um, talk about what is Black Affinity Housing? I would say the, the biggest component is allowing students um, and having giving students the opportunity to live in a shared space, um, in a space with others who have a, a shared identity, specifically a marginalized identity here at Western. I remember last year, I had a question that was sent over from admissions. It was a um, black identified female student who asked, um, which residence hall community is best to live in? I'd like to live with other black students. Um, and have that shared experience, which hall should I live in? And that was a really hard question to answer. Um, all of our halls should be inclusive and welcoming, but that was a specific need that we couldn't yet offer. Um, so it's one reason I'm really excited about this program. And it, that's just one example, but we've also heard from Black student organizations and lists of demands at Western really around having programs that represent the Black student community and that are supportive to that community as well. One of the specific demands from Black student organizations was around an early arrival program where Black students could connect with Black identified faculty and staff on campus. Um, and this program will provide that, but hopefully that also extends um, to build connections and relationships with Black identified faculty and staff um, across their time at Western, not just living in the halls, um, but throughout their entire experience. So this really, this community is really meant to provide a safer space, a welcoming space, and a space for Black identified students to connect um, within community. So in building and um, talking about Black affinity housing, some of the overarching goals, like Vicki had mentioned, is recognizing that we've been working with um, students in housing. We have other theme communities, honors community, pride community, other communities that we've tried to build and support and foster 
um, in our housing system, but the overall goals of Black Affinity Housing is to really build that caring, connected community amongst residents. Um, and really, it's about giving them space, give them physical space, give them voice, give them a place to get connected. Um, so that connects to the second goal of providing those opportunities for learning about development of the students' own multidimensional personal and social identities. What does that mean? That means learn about their history, give them space for a voice, but also teach them language to describe their identities, their experiences. So this is about also learning about the history of Alma Glass, not just name, by name, but honor and celebrate um, this person in which the, the hall represents as well. So wanting to give that opportunity programmatically through connections, through learning for them to, to build that, um, that development. And then also have a, a space for, the, for them to connect with residents across campus to promote academic success, personal wellness, centering on the Black student experience. We have a multitude of campus resources um, on our campus. We know that we provide a lot of programming and outreach um, to our students, but how does that translate to a specific identity, to a specific group? Those needs may look very, very different. And so rather than just build, building uh, on what we currently have, which is like, oh, try utilizing some of these resources, this provides an opportunity for us to also collaborate with campus resources as a starting point um, for supporting these students. And so we do want to translate some of the things that we've been doing. We have a curriculum called URISE um, that focuses on career preparedness and personal wellness and, and, and inclusive community building, but translating what that actually means for Black affinity housing will be critical. So what does academic advising look like um, in this community and with this population? So those are the overarching goals um, that we're starting out with, but really building a foundation for the development of further goals and for students to see themselves within these goals is very critical to us. Just a little bit of context about the development of Black Affinity Housing. We really started summer 2020. During the pandemic was a great time for us to shift focus and really think about the future and reassess what housing wants to be, what's the direction uh, that we want to go in. Um, it was a time for us to really sit, sit and think about, all right, what are all the resources that we have? Where do we wanna go? Um, we started in summer, like I said, we called um, a lot of institutions. We, and Richard will talk about some of the institutions we reached out to. We interviewed a lot of institutions that um, have black affinity housing or uh, other identity-based housing to really understand what are some of the challenges? What are some of the things that uh, they did to overcome some of those challenges? How did the community respond? What are the student responses? What are some things that you, they can really offer for us as we're creating this community? Um, since then, we moved into planning, a lot of planning um, fall 2020 and um, winter 2021. This involves many constituents, everybody including um, campus resources that we commonly work with, architects, including students. That is really critical is to include the students. We've worked with our um, student organizations like our Residence Hall Association, our National Residence Hall uh, Honorary, but it's really important to have students through this process and even in building the physical building because it's about, again, giving that, that voice and that space. And so really lifting those voices and, and really at this that point was, uh, and throughout is really to listen to the students and their needs um, as we build the, the community. And so um, as we move into winter, um, we started a Black Affinity um, Housing Advisory Group um, and several task force that work to continue to explore and work to, to flesh out what is the building represent, which spaces in the building represent, what different spaces in the building represent, um, and how do we work with campus resources? What are the needs of the students? Um, yesterday, we facilitated a brainstorming session with students and staff and faculty as well uh, to discuss things like art and the environment and the culture uh, and, and what we want the space to say. So moving into spring, um, 
where we're at in summer is really the creation of some of those educational strategies, methods for support and outreach and advertising, really focusing on like, how do we, we have this wonderful program, this space we want to create, how do we market that? How, do, how, are, how are we marketing it to the audience that we want to target? Um, and what do we want to do to transition um, students in this hall in this program? So we're, we're in the planning stages of what that, what that means. Um, and then we're hoping to launch in fall 2021. So those of you who have stepped foot on campus or driven by campus, that building um, has grown really, uh, really fast over the past couple months. And it is um, right off of High Street and Highland Drive. So I'd recommend that you swing by to uh, take a peek at it. What we've heard and um, we want to acknowledge we've heard um, the voices of students. This is long overdue. We are, we know we are responding to student needs. We've heard long uh, for a long time that students are asking for this space. Um, so it's long overdue. We, and, and we know that this is this response to some of the needs that they've listed. And so we're trying to also be proactive in this as well as we build this residence hall and what the programmatic needs are. But we know that um, this is something that's important to us. Um, it's important to build more spaces and collaborate with the other spaces like the MCC on campus. We know representation is very important. We know we've been discussing uh, representation on staff, role models, training, um, the things that um, the students want to see in this environment. We've also um, heard that providing clear guidance to campus partner on purpose and vision is key. We depend on, we don't work necessarily in a vacuum. We work with admissions, we work with new student um, orientation because we all play a role to support students. You might be in academic advising, for example, and, and maybe the student is struggling um, with their physical environment that's impacting their academics. And so maybe, um, maybe that's key, but really we need to work and communicate with the whole campus, staff, faculty, and everybody to, because we all work with students in some capacity um, to really make sure that we're all on the same page and that we're um, communicating and understanding the purpose of what this, what this building stands for and, and what it's for. And then we need to be culturally relevant, make culturally relevant spaces for students on campus. Um, we've been in discussions where it's like, oh, we can partner and put more programs, uh, work with um, the union to put more programs in the multicultural center as well. But then we, we took a step back to say like, well, this is also about building programmatic spaces in the residence hall, which we, we previously did not necessarily have for a specific population. And so this is about really building additional spaces as well and, and making it culturally relevant. And so trying to define what that means for us, for the students is, is really critical. Um, I will also add, we, we also pay attention to other initiatives on campus. We've been particularly looking at the Viking Union's um, equity and diversity action plan as well, specifically their strategy 2.1. And I'd recommend you take a peek at that um, but really, it's about supporting the development of culturally relevant student-centered spaces. And, and we want to be a part of that. We want to work with other campus partners uh, on that. So, Thanks, Don. And Don mentioned this, but we knew when we started this that we were not kind of breaking ground on some, something new here. We, we heard about it. Some of us, our staff had worked in places where we have affinity um, housing. So. We knew there's information out there. This is just a snapshot of some of the folks um, that we talked to. There is a combination of um, small, private, mid-sized, large institutions. We started on the West Coast and kind of worked our way down and then, then back up to the East Coast. So some people we talked to directly with kind of longer interviews. Some we had multiple conversations and some was just kind of looking at people's website um, and getting some information from there. We did, you know, partner with um, a lot of West Coast and UC schools who are, we tried to have the same kind of population size as us and things like that but we weren't kind of exclusive in that so we did talk to some hbcus as well i'd say um some of our schools that um have been doing this for a long time provide us really good information and our director Lionel jones has also had experience experience hbcus as well so 
it's been ongoing. We've also uh, launched an inclusion assistant program prior. And so some of the relationships they benchmark there, we elaborate on, um, we continued those. I'd say a couple of the highlights though, like Stanford um, were one. So they've been doing culture houses since the seventies. And um, some of you hopefully may know this, a big part of our uh, URI's framework is using um, Dr. Tari Osmo's Korean Cultural Wealth, who brought to campus before. And they talked about, you know, they've been doing that before it was ever written down since the 70s. What does that look like? But how do we say that your existing skills, knowledges, and abilities matter when there's no space that celebrates those, right? And so I think that gets into the culturally relevant spaces. So Stanford talked a lot about that, but that every living community is still a learning community. And they talked about what components uh, that they bring in, which was really, um, really interesting. I'd say UC Riverside, New Hampshire, a couple others, they, they've really explored more of a affinity group pod style living environment. So really, um, they've expanded to if the students want it, they can create it. If they build it, they will come kind of thing. So if if the um, students say, you know, I want to have black affinity housing, and it's launched, and there's enough signups, they'll make it happen. And it's more of this kind of cluster of pod style. Now there's challenges with that as well, really to architectural design and things like that. And maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves. But that was opportunities of how they've expanded the program there throughout. I'd say a couple of the big things that were themes that came out throughout that we learned was one was this, you have to have the buy-in from your division, your campus, because um, it's, you know, we can do all this, but we know that you get just as many calls as we do through admissions, through advising, um, you know, clubs and organizations. So if you don't know what this is and the benefits or and where it is and why we're doing it, um, that can be you know, troublesome to the students because ultimately they're going to come to you and want to talk about it and I know we you get those questions as well so making sure that all of our campus partners know what it is can kind of get behind it and articulate it and why it exists um you know just, you know honestly there's, there's questions we've already got we'll get questions we know we'll get questions from um, local kind of news agencies and things like that that's going to come up we'll get the question of is this legal is this segregation we've already gotten these questions but we're prepared for those because we did a lot of benchmarking before and it's just a good opportunity to kind of educate folks of why this place exists particularly uh, at western i'd say one of the other big pieces was um looking at our campus data working with our students dong talked a lot about that so there's obviously no reason to move forward it's probably you know very late in the game but we're happy with providing that um, at least now and the, and the other one was continue to get the student input, not just at the start, but you know throughout. So that's one of the reasons we've got the Black Affinity Advisory Group working, and we're going to kind of streamline that as we move forward, but still working closely um, with our staff and students and faculty as we go out the process and launch in fall 2021. In terms of what it'll maybe look like a little bit, um, Residence Life, unfortunately, has the kind of alphabet soup of acronyms, so it can be confusing at times. So you hear people say, you know, RD, RA, IA, AB. Um, essentially, there'll be an assistant director, which is someone at my level, kind of overseeing the kind of vision of, of the program, what it looks like, kind of working with the, the in the in-building supervisor. And so we have supervising resident directors, which is Don Bo, and they're all master's level professionals, resident directors and assistant resident directors. They're all full-time professionals. And as also, we'll have student staff. So we have the resident advisor, and we also have an inclusion assistant that will be dedicated to this, um, this affinity group, as well as additional funding that will go with the programmatic aspects as well. Now, we know that we can't try and you know boil the ocean, and a big part of our curriculum is not trying to be academic advising, not trying to be counseling, but having those warm handoffs with you all. And we do do a little bit uh, of all that, but in terms of how do we really center the Black experience? So we don't want to just make this affinity group and then, hey, you know, um, I'll, I'll call on Megan because me and Megan work quite close um, for programs for root beer and registration. We're not just going to take root beer and registration and put it in and do a separate program here. How does registration advising strategies look different and center the Black experience? How does, um, a program I think came on by the students that came up for our group was, uh, you know, um, we do another one with fashion and wellness a lot about um, me and relationships, consensual relationships, hot and ready dating. So again, what does that look like? Dating while black in Bellingham. What does that look like? Supporting black owned businesses, um, places that. So really important to center the black experience. And I think we're already, we're already working with um, Effie and folks over there to talk about how do, you know, the, the black job search. What does that look like? And this is similar work that we try to do with our pride housing as well, of really centering those experiences instead of just kind of saying, oh, you know, it's the same for everyone. Here's this wonderful you know, program. So that's that's a big piece of it. We do intentional conversations. I think most of you know that now where we meet with about 90% of our students 
almost guaranteed every year on a one-to-one -one capacity, either through student or professional. So we want to continue that. We really want to make a partnership with staff, faculty that we can do. You know, one of the benefits we have um, is we can take you to lunch or dinner um, in the dining hall. So we want to create that floor dinner, that community dinner, community lunch, where we're, there's a group of us, uh, staffs, students, faculty, and we'll go kind of weekly, twice a week, whatever that looks like, as well as doing celebratory, maybe dinners and things like that at, at the end. Um, but the last part is just changing what we know and listening to the students and meet the specific need that we're hearing, whatever that is. And so working with, you know, um, African Caribbean Club and BSO and, and other folks like that in, in the room. So we know that we can do this ourselves, and we're really relying on the help of, of others to make this um, really great and really center you know, Black excellence and, and our other goals as well. Still me. Um, so Vicky talked about early arrival. So this year for some of you look a, a little different. Um, we're not going to have the grand opening just on the Sunday. Um, there will be people coming in. But what we want to do is have this affinity group move in on the Thursday and really have this is not nailed down yet. We're working, we're kind of working through this, but we I think we're landing on a Thursday and Friday of kind of activities, team building, because we want this affinity group not just to be a place, you know, we'll say to live, it's, it's, uh, to build community, but also get the connections with staff and faculty. So we're working on doing um, some community building pieces, tour of the MCC, maybe there's a round table, get connection with um, staff and faculty. Also probably go to Lakewood, uh, doing a Bellingham tour, and then having kind of a celebratory kickoff to the year as well. Now there's other things in there that we've floated around doing a parent welcome, a parent info session, but if you, you know, I'd say if this, if you're start, if you're kind of the creative juices are, are getting tickled here, I would suggest that if you're advising or you're like, oh, I'd love to put on a session or I have a session I do in my class, and I'd love to do that. Let me know and I will pencil you in. Um, this is where we're looking for you all because the reality is we will have staff and fund it and we'll facilitate it, but all of our staff will also be checking everybody in at this time. And again, we know that we're not the, the experts to oversee this. So if you're like, if you see yourself in this early arrival or throughout, please let us know and, and we can start that relationship with pencil union. What does that look like? And we'll help with the facilitation of all and kind of funding and, and all that. But we're looking for people who have expert knowledge and passion areas in this to, to help us. Knowing that not everything has to happen in the first two days and there can be ongoing um, experiences, but we're really looking to start the community strong uh, with this early arrival process and celebrating the space and getting ready for kind of opening um, welcome week. I think I said this already, so, um, but again, I'll reiterate, we want to make sure that when we say collaborate, we're also not just saying here's access to the students. Right, or here's access to Alm Cloud class building, but it really is an ongoing collaborative process that we have with many of you. Um, you know, with uh, Megan, Joan, Tracy, and Amy, and m many others. Um, but we want to make sure that it is streamlined, it's purposeful, and it does, above all else, center the Black experience. And we want to make sure that that's um, continued throughout. So, if, again, if you're thinking of that, write your notes down. Um, happy to meet with you separately or talk after this as well. If you see yourself. Uh, positively impacting it and if there's opportunities. Okay, so Dong mentioned that Black Affinity Housing will be in our new residence hall opening in fall 2021. Uh, so it's Alma Clark Glass Residence Hall. Um, it's a brand new building um, named after the first Black student to attend Western. Um, so we really want this building to honor that, to celebrate that, and also bring in um, the experience of Black identified students currently um, and what that looks like through artwork, signage, uh, just the design of the building. So we chose Alma Clark Glass for Black Affinity Housing because it's really the only opportunity that we've had to develop the building and the design of the building around the program. A lot of our residence halls are old, um, old facilities, and we try to change the structure to meet the needs of our programs. Um, and this was a way to do that way ahead of time um, and to get a lot of student input um, through our student leadership organizations, through that Black Affinity uh, Advisory Group, uh, through you all, through faculty, staff, and students as well. Um, so that's been a great opportunity for us. Uh, we're working with a consultant, like Dong mentioned, uh, to really make this space welcoming. Um, and really, when you walk into the building, that you know where you are um, at Western's campus and what the building represents. So we're excited for that. Um, Alma Clark Glass 
Hall is on the Ridge community. So 400 beds, um, 400 students are able to live there. We're reserving 40 bed spaces, so for 40 students um, to live as part of this program. Um, our application, housing application is open. Our priority deadline is May 1st. So we'll think we'll have more applications coming in. Um, right now we have, I think Richard told me eight applications uh, as of, oh, nine, as of yesterday um, for Black Affinity Housing. So we're excited about that. We know the community will probably start off small. Um, just as Pride Housing or gender neutral housing or other programs that we've started. Um, until the word gets out. So we're really hoping that you all will help us um, spread the, the information um, and to make sure when you're talking with students that this is an option on campus. And of course, it, it's just one option. There's multiple communities to choose from, but if this is a, the best option for a student, we encourage you to share that. Um, one advantage of this new residence hall as well and having Black Affinity Housing in this space is there's multiple room options. So there's singles, there's doubles, there's triple rooms, there's suite style rooms, there's rooms with the bathroom in the room, there's rooms where um, there's pod style bathrooms. So no matter what students are looking for in their housing space, um, we think this building will be able to provide a lot of those amenities. Um, there's a ton of lounges, study spaces, large community kitchen areas. Um, so it's a really great building for community development, getting to know other students um, in the building um, and just for creating those connections. One piece that was important too is housing is planning to move towards um, tiered pricing or different level pricing for housing options in the fall. Um, and this building is on that middle middle level um, in terms of price point for housing. Um, but there's also a lot of triples in the space um, that provide our most affordable housing option. So that was an important piece of this as well to make sure that we have um, affordable housing um, and housing at that value um, price here for um, all students who want that or need that. Uh, there's, for Black Affinity Housing, it's a selection on our housing application, which I'll show you here in just a second. Um, it's really easy to apply. I'll share those questions with you. Um, and right now we're doing a lot of advertising, trying to get the word out. We have some webinars coming up for um, students who are coming back to live on campus at Western and then students looking to live on campus in the future. So really trying to spread the information as much as possible. Um, a lot of times we have students come in um, and they move in on move-in day and then a few days later they move to a specific learning community that we have because it's a better fit but they didn't have the knowledge or they didn't know um, about the community beforehand so we're trying to get the word out as much as possible um, for students to know about this option. So applying is really easy. Um, we listed our website on right on the slide for Black Affinity Housing. So students would submit answers to the questions, how will living in this community positively contribute to your success as a student? And what steps will you take to help meet the goals of Black Affinity based housing? So it's really just to get a sense of why they're looking to live there. Um, it helps us too for planning for future years and what the needs are um, and what they're really seeking from the community. Um, so really looking forward to reading those applications in the next few weeks. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing this for a second here. I'm also going to stop our recording so we can open up for questions.